So first limbers away. Practice away, limber off the off the field gun. And the second tractor pulling away. These are a Morris commercial tractor, four-cylinder engine. Trace their lineage back to the 30s, but again we're still in use well after World War II. They will pull the house down, as they say. They're a tremendously good people for hauling stuff about slowly. Same engine was fitted in the Morris Light Reconnaissance car and a number of other Morris products during World War II, before and after. And there were, of course, other manufacturers that made um, 25 pounder tractors, all of which looked much the same. There were Ford, Chevrolet, Garmin, and uh, various other truck makers who made very similar things. So the ammunition limb is being placed. Um, they have a trailer that goes in the middle of the rig, and that carries all the shell cases and ammunition, fuses, etc, etc. And the gun's set up, ready to fire. So I'm going to hand this microphone over. Who's having the microphone? You'll take the microphone, okay. You can introduce yourself. Hello, right, it works here. So ladies and gentlemen, what we've got here today is a gun section worth of artillery. The only thing that's missing from this demonstration would be a third Morris commercial gun tractor with two limbers that would then act as the ammunition transport to and from the gun positions. So we've got two gun teams here today. Number one gun is having a bit of a, a struggle trying to get their gun in the position, so some encouragement does sometimes help. Well, there's about two people that encourage them there, so thank you for those two people out there. So the second gun is now lining up, um, and they're about in position. The gun positioning officer is now plotting the uh, fire control orders that might be given to the two gun teams. They're then going to be getting orders from higher up in the chain of command. Meanwhile, the guns are going to get themselves set up, and when they're happy, they're then going to go back to a uh, position. They're going to come back, dress off the guns, and they're going to relax until they're told their fire control orders. So the Morris commercials that were driving around earlier, the gun tractors, they are Morris Commercial Mark III's, and their job is to basically move the gun crew, the limber, which is the ammunition tray, a trailer, and then the gun into its position. They are quite good off-road. Um, they're slightly underpowered, and they're quite hot and noisy, so being a artillery gun in the World War II was somewhat um, hard work. The guns in front of you today, they don't really know the ins and outs of their history, um, but they both would have been at the right era um, to be serving in World War II in training or overseas in Europe. So number two gun now, they're set up and they've won the first part of this competition. That's probably because I was driving their quad. So well done, number two gun. And if you wanted to take positions rear number two gun, you could do that when you're ready. Number two gun now, they're set up. They're gonna go back to positions rear. They're just gonna wait out until the gun position officer has then received orders of what they're about to do. So they're just going to be waiting now, ready to go. We've got seven rounds to be fired today, ladies and gentlemen. There will be some loud noises throughout the display. Um, if you've got pets or anything else, keep them out of the way. And uh, you shouldn't need to put anything in your ears. It should be quite a good display. So ladies and gentlemen, now then, the two guns, they're in position, they're ready to go. The gun position is then, or officer, is going to give his orders to the two gun crews. So ladies and gentlemen, the, the two gun crews now just chilling out, relaxing, looking what's going to happen next when they can have some downtime, they could go and get themselves fed, watered, shaved, wash their feet, that kind of thing, and then now the gun position is going to give this first set of orders. Fresh target. Take post. The two gun crews now are taking their positions up in the guns, ready to start firing with the fire control orders they're about to receive. Clearly paper wasn't used in World War II. 
117. Charge three. The orders have been given then to load an eight or to prepare an HE round using 117, charge three. The gunners will then change the dial sight onto charge three. There's four different types of charge, charge one, charge two, charge three, and super. That will then change the, how far the projectile will be thrown. So if you want to go up to seven and a half miles, you use a super charge, or if you're going for a short shot, then you'd use charge one. Number one, low. The gun on the right hand side, which is number one gun, is now going to command his team to load the gun. You get the projectile out of the case, it's handed to the loader, the loader shows number one. Correct, correct is given, and then the round is put into the chamber. Once it's in, the breach is closed, and now that gun is ready to fire. Bearing. One, two, two degrees. Fire by order. Elevation. Two, five degrees. The gun information is now going to both guns, so both guns are now going to lay onto the same information so that when the whole section is told to fire, as they were told to fire by order, both rounds should hit exactly the same point using the lay methods from World War II. Number one gun. One gun ranging. Number one, fire! So, the first gun fired, the breach was opened, the empty case ejected. Number one gun now reloads straight away, ready to fire the second round. So the first HE round now has missed the original target. So what we now to do is the uh, corrections and calculations need to be made to bring that first HE high explosive round back onto our target. Elevation, two, seven degrees. The number one repeated that back to make the necessary changes, but the changes happen on both guns. So therefore, when the second's tired to fire, they'll both get on target. Number one, fire! They'll then observe using the forward observation to have a look to see where that second HE round ended up onto the target. It turns out that it has, so now the gun position officer is happy that both HE rounds have gotten to the target and they're now going to continue with the fire mission. Number one gun's already loaded by accident, so they'll get a black mark against their name. Number two gun is now the rounds. And they fired accidentally. What's going on with number one gun? You should not have fired yet. That was a load. Number two gun is now loading the second gun. Back over to the gun position officer. Bearing one, two, two degrees. Elevation two, seven degrees. Now the number one, number two gun should, um, should acknowledge and return that back to the gun position officer. Which they've just now done. Two rounds. Gunfire. And number one gun is also showing ready because they've already fired their first round. Fire! Now then two rounds to go off, so number one gun needs to fire its second round, and then number two gun is going to fire its second round as well. So now the number ones are reporting back to the company that all of the rounds of the HE have now gone to the target, and they're now ready waiting further orders. Detachment rear! So the enemy target has now been blown up using high explosive rounds. The infantry will be now thinking about their HR and prepare to move in on that enemy position. Meanwhile, the, the um, artillery are now waiting out for their further orders, but because they're not doing anything now, they dress back from the guns. As the infantry would advance on the, HE, on the um, enemy position, they would then need smoke to screen their position. So that's what's gonna happen next. We're gonna start fire some smoke into that enemy position. 
fresh target. Smoke, two, 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 charge, two. The round now has changed from HE to smoke. Bearing, one, two, two degrees. Fire by order. Elevation, three, two degrees. Fuse, one, two. So that fuse is a delay, so when the smoke round will impact, there will be a delay until the smoke starts bellowing out the round. Number two, load. Only number two gun now, loads. Number two, one gun. Ranging. Number two, fire. fire. Again, the same thing now, we need to correct the smoke rounds onto the target. Fuse, one, two. Number two, low. Elevation, three, three degrees. Number two, fire. Guns now are going to fire the smoke onto target in quick succession. So two rounds go off first. As quick as they can, they load up the gun again. And then on the third round, will be a 10 second delay from their last shot to ensure that the amount of smoke in the position is measured and is then being an effective cover for the infantry to attack the enemy position. And now they must move fairly quickly because what goes out can come in. Tracers work in both directions and artillery makes smoke 
and you can guarantee that the enemy will be looking to see where that battery was parked, where they were firing from. So we can now expect a retaliation from German counter batteries and they want to move fairly quickly before their guns start getting hit by German HE. Now these are tremendously heavy things, it's a team effort. Watch these guys and girls working together to move the limbers. Just changing the wheel on one of these vehicles is a two-man job. So you can imagine how heavy they are. Don't get your fingers caught in the, in the uh, towing guys. You can really measure how good these are, these guys are by how little fuss they're making about hitching up. I expect they've spent quite a lot of time practicing this. I know I would. And ladies and gentlemen, you just might be interested to know that the uh, gun detachments are under the command of Andy Thomas and they comprise relations and friends and their boyfriends and girlfriends and we've been practicing this all morning so um, I think they uh, deserve a very good round of applause because they've done extraordinarily well yeah I think they've done rather well on their behalf, thank you very much. This is a thing that the British Army trained for for weeks and months. And as ever with these demonstrations, the guys and girls doing it have not had the time to train that regular or even TA soldiers would. So we have to be impressed by how well they do. So thank you very much the Gunners, marvellous.